Okay, we're over here in the, in the city of Easton where it's not just Allentown, but there's a lot of political races, uh, campaigns and races happening here in the Lehigh Valley. And a local business owner, it decided to make a run for city council. Um, now, Anthony, who owns Connections Art Gallery here in Easton, and also, yes, with Alice, and also publishes The Elucidator. Uh, now, first first question, just, this is just, I'm, I'm approaching this article as I'm, a, I'm also a registered voter in Lehigh Valley, even though I don't live in Easton, you know, I'm a registered voter. So how long have you actually lived in Lehigh Valley in the city of Easton? The city itself? Yeah. Since 1998. Okay. I grew up in a small town called Martins Creek, which is slightly north of Easton, and graduated from Easton High. In okay. So you're, so you're a long time resident and familiar with not just the... Because in the Lehigh Valley, especially in the city of Allentown recently, there's almost like this whole elitist attitude developing in a lot of areas. So you, so you're familiar. So you're familiar with like, you know, from the street level on up with the with the city with the city and the area, correct? Most regards, I would say. I mean, there's obviously some upper echelon stuff that occurs on privy to. Right. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I can always. This is a, this is uncut, unscripted. So if there is. My friend Alexis. You can watch. Go ahead. Um, now, so now here's an here's a, something that I've actually taken notice. To be, being a local business owner really helps as far as being a member of city government. But I know this really doesn't happen on the local level. But as far as being as far as if you are elected to city council. Do you see that, that, like, let's just say, for instance, you would have a big corporation that would want to come into the city, which would help the city overall, but would hurt some of the local businesses. Would, would you, like, in a situation like that, where there might be a personal conflict of interest, would you abstain from the vote? I would I'm just, this is a, just a hypothetical oh, I, I, situation. I, I, hypothetically, this would be what they are. I, I don't see that. Uh, my my uh, disapproval of, of certain aspects of development had to do with whether or not I feel like it's okay. constitutionally proper. If it's constitutionally proper, there's not much I can do about it. Okay. You know, I, I have case the point. There's businesses right across the street from me that I'm not very happy about, but you're stuck within the realm of what you can do about those things. That's all I can do. So I can just, you know, if the, if the developer has the money and has, the, you know, the agreement with the person who owns the property and that's what they're doing as long as it meets planning and code. It's really a planning department we decided not to the council. Yeah. It's the plan, that's why you have these divisions of governance so that you don't have conflict of interest. So the assumption would be the planning department passes it and it passes zoning. So the council is basically there to make sure that uh, there is no conflict of interest outside of that. Like, so you know, okay. that, that uh, somebody wasn't cajoled financially to stay on the planning department. Okay. I mean, I'll be honest with you. This is a whole learning process for myself. Not, you know, you know. Also, so I'm actually, you know, and like, I mean, last election in the area, the turnout just the the turnout, the low turnout rate even floored even me. I mean, I knew a lot of people gave up on politics, but the numbers, I was like, I mean, I think Allentown had a 10 percent turnout. So. As far as trying to get people interested in politics again and, and making them realize that, hey, your vote and what you think does matter, especially on the local level, is that one of your concerns also? Certainly, but I don't believe it's something I can address heavily in the next two months. Our election at least is going to be decided in the primary. Okay. There's uh, only Democrats running, so it's not going to be contested past the primary. So we're at that the, the election would can't be a run to November. It would give you a lot more time to uh, engender that sort of focus on how to create a greater voter inclusion or less voter apathy, however you want to talk about it. But past that, yes, it's something I, and it's something I became woefully aware of as I decided to do this, that there is obviously a, a low birth voter turnout east as well. So it is something that needs to be addressed. It, 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 you can assess it as many different uh, things, like one can be the overall, some people are just particularly apathetic, doesn't really matter what you do, what you say, that they're going to do it. Or it, it could be a, a large, in a large sense, a disenfranchisement, where people just don't feel like they have a, a voice that would matter. 
so that that would be the, the place where if I was uh, to address that, I would try to. Where are we talking about how do you feel like you're part of the process? Okay. Now, I actually have one final question. Like I said, we're just going to keep this short, sweet, uh, you know, and hopefully I did not offend you with some of them. It's just, you know. <laughs> it's winter in the Northeast, uh, you know. I mean, I heard them calling for more of that S word tomorrow. Um, now, as far as if you're, you know, if you'd be elected to city council, um, no matter where you live in this country, I don't care from the smallest town all the way up to like New York City, Sometimes people can only see, okay, well, whether it's a voter, whether it's a politician, they can only see the area that they live, and that's it. But recently I've taken notice that Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton, even Catasauqua are all becoming a part of, it's like the whole Lehigh Valley is, being re, is going through a rebirth and redevelopment, the Lehigh Valley as a whole. Um, how, like, as far as if you, you know, running for city council, what do you see as far as the development and growth of Easton? And also, how do you see Easton's role as a part of the whole picture of the, you know, the Lehigh Valley versus just the city of Easton? Because everything affects everything else. Okay, well, you have, to, you have to answer that question from different points of view, obviously. So you would say, well, how I see things and how the reality really are. Too. So I can see things the way I want them to. A city council member has uh, limited authority Right. Obviously, we live in a community that has a very strong mayor for governance. So, my opinion on growth at East is, you know, it's, I find it to be a positive so long as it's well planned and thought through as far as what it does to the people that exist here already. Having said that, we have a massive amount of space for capacity. So, currently, we've been building in places that have been vacant for a very long time. We haven't done any, uh, there's not, hasn't been a bunch of like, oh, hey, I'm going to buy something that was populated with people, redevelop it, kick the people out. That hasn't actually happened yet. Right. It's a much different case than what happened in Allentown where they took a whole city block. Regionally, I, you know, I see Easton as the gateway to the Lehigh Valley because the, the people that you're talking about that are moving here, their growth pattern is being dictated primarily from the East. There's some from the South of Philadelphia, but primarily from the East. So we're the first place that people encounter when they're coming Direction. So, yeah, I would connections think, is like a block away from a bridge right here. So I would think that as as a, a regionalist, where people would be real regionalists, that they would see that as a positive. Okay. Now, the actuality of regionalism is not that that is not the case. Right. People, most regionalists don't perceive Easton as the first place or contact event that's kind of like thought of or is thought of as like a tertiary concept of anything in that regional dialogue. So, so typically, it's downtown. But in some degree, there's like the Salt Valley contingency, whatever, wherever the influence may be. Right. East is not really part of that, though, regionally speaking. At least that, that's my take on it. You know? Okay, but do you see East in becoming more, becoming more of, more, more of a part of that regionalism, you know, as a whole, versus just what you just said about the way people see it now? Do you see people? Like the overall opinion changing because I've, I've even taken notice that the city is going through redevelopment now with the new city hall that's you know and everything that the city the city isn't getting enough credit for what it's doing right now that's what I've taken notice to do you see Easton increasing in that you know as far as people's opinions of how much of a major role it's playing here in the Lehigh Valley in general or whatever constitutes Lehigh Valley anymore I'd have to say that I don't see that happening currently. Were it to happen in the future, it would be because Easton did it, and everybody would be like, oh, hey, look at Easton. But mm -hmm. when you have two communities that are far larger, so it's just like downtown, they're the ones that are getting the attention. So if Easton becomes the gem of the Lehigh Valley, it's not because of some regional concept that made it that way, it's because Easton just decided to do it. Okay. All right, well, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it, and I told you it'd be short and sweet and to the point. Sorry about this one, but uh, I've been fighting one off for a while. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.